our, our next presenter is uh, Luis Rodriguez. Um, he received his, his bachelor degree and master degree in electrical engineering from the University from the Universidad Tecnológica de Pereira in Colombia. Uh, he's currently pursuing his PhD degree in electrical and computer engineering at the UT Smart Energy Lab uh, here at the University of Utah. His research interests include the operation and resilience of power and water distribution systems. Um, Mr. Rodriguez Garcia is the recipient of the Fulbright Scholarship in 2009. His presentation today is, is, is titled Metrics to Quantify Resilience of Inter Interdependent Power and Water Distribution Systems. So, please. Um, thank you so much, Jairo, for the uh, introduction. Uh, so, today I'm going to talk about metrics to quantify resilience, and we're going to do this in the context of interdependent uh, power and water distribution systems, which is a work that we've been doing in the USMART Lab, uh, along with Professor Barbania and my colleague Mary Husseini. Um, so let's start tackling the problem from the from the power perspective. Well, we see, we saw this figure in the in the previous presentation, um, and what it, what we know now in that, in, and it's a reality in the power grids is that uh, grids are now more vulnerable to this and uh, natural disasters, like extreme weather events. And what we have here is a picture of the 2021 uh, billion dollar disasters that happened in the country: wildfires, tornadoes, hurricanes. Um, all over the country. And what we see here, and what we see well, when we compare this data over the years, uh, we see that the trend is that this is going to increase. This is going to be increasing, and we're going to be facing more of these uh, disasters year after year. So when we analyze the resilience problem, where we see the consequences on the power grid, but we also need to consider that it is not limited to the, to the power system, but this also extends to other infrastructures that are dependent on the, on the electricity supply. So this is when uh, the water distribution systems enter in the, uh, in the formula. So uh, water distribution systems have different uh, energy intensive process depending on the power grid. So we have a power outage in the grid as, as shown in the figure, and then we have sections of the power distribution system that are disconnected. And then uh, these are also linked to elements in the water distribution system. Uh, what we have here is that there is an interruption, for example, in the water supply on the, on the water side, which could be compensated. We have any kind of uh, water storage, uh, if, if there's any, and, and then the the water demand can be partially or fully supplied. supplied. What this implies is that events that occur in the power grid then are cascading into the water distribution system, intensifying or magnifying the, the consequences of the disaster. So uh, basically, when we combine, like there's a power outage, and, and in addition, we have a, a water shortage as a result of, of, the, of the event. Uh, basically, what we have is a life threatening scenario, as we have seen in just to mention a couple of cases and Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico or the Texas winter storm uh, last year. So what can we do to mitigate this impact? And basically what, what we should start uh, considering is how can we quantify, how can we measure this? So what we find is that uh, when we are, when, when we see the methods and we see the current practices that are done for, for enhancing resilience in the system, we see that uh, these systems are treated as independent. So uh, methods to enhance resilience in each of the sites consider that it's specific problems, uh, but we are not bringing them together as, and, uh, despite their, their interdependence. Uh, interdependence of power systems has been analyzed with other infrastructures, for example, uh, natural gas systems. Uh, this, is, this has been widely studied. However, we don't see uh, these studies as much as in, in the context of the power water nexus. Uh, despite we know that uh, the, the electricity consumption that is related, for example, to processes as water treatment or water distribution. And we also know that there's some research uh, where we see that when we analyze these systems together, when we analyze and include the interdependence and, in, for example, in dispatch calculations and stuff, uh, we see that there are benefits because water distribution systems act as flexible loads uh, that can provide or that can support the operation of the power grid as well. So the gap here is that we lack, there's a lack of metrics that allows us to quantify uh, how is the interdependence uh, between the resilience of the power and water distribution systems. So to continue on this topic, uh, I wanna uh, introduce uh, two indicators or performance indicators of uh, power saving capability and water, uh, water saving capability, um, which basically, are defined as the average ratio, ratio of power and water supply and the power and water distribution system respectively over a set of scenarios. And when we calculate this, uh, we, we're going to bring this, this figure that is familiar when we're studying resilience, this trapezoid curve. 
uh, when we see that we have a normal condition where the system is operating in a normal state and then something happens and then we have a degradation in the in the power supply until a, a, a low point depending on the on the event and eventually recovery actions are, are being taken to take this to bring the system back into operation and we, we observe some similarities in the response on the water side uh, what i want to bring uh, from this when we compare these two is that there are, there are elements uh, that we can start relating the power and water side uh, to basically try to tie uh, what is how what is happening in one system is reflected into the other. So, for example, there are time shifts on how fast one system is affected compared to when the other when there is a disruption on the other. Uh, there are some rates of degradation or or recovery that can also be influenced from one system to the other, and and some loss of, of in the operation. So. For this purpose, uh, we have defined this, this set of metrics. Uh, we wanted to consider different aspects in this, uh, the different relationships that we have in different in different points of these curves. Uh, so we have uh, defined these six indicators. The first indicator uh, is focused on this uh, DK rates, these degradation rates at the beginning. So we want to we want to see how sensitive the water distribution system is uh, to disruptions or the degradation in the power distribution side. So this is analyzed on that side. The second metric is uh, related to the recovery side. So we want to see is uh, how fast or how sensitive uh, the water distribution system recovers. It is the water distribution system recovery when we have also uh, the restoration of the power distribution side. The third indicator is uh, quantifies based on the on the total uh, disruption that we have in both systems, like how much uh, water was not supplied compared to the power that was not supplied and try to see what is the impact of one system on, onto the other. The fourth indicator is based on the notion of cross correlation. Uh, the cross correlation is comparing the, the power and water saving capabilities and trying to find similarities between the two signals. So the notion in this one is that the more similar they, they are, what we're indicating here is that uh, one is being more reflected on into the other system, like the, the effects of one system system is being reflected more into the other. And uh, the two indicators are related to these time shifts that we see. So when there is degradation in the power grid, it does not necessarily mean that the water system is going to be affected immediately. It depends on, for example, what is the location of the, of the fault. If we have, uh, for example, uh, enough water storage to sustain the water operation that's going to delay the, the degradation of the water system and finally uh, the other one is related to the recovery point where uh, we can have the the water system can be recovered at the same time or before or after uh, the power supply is is restored and we want to quantify all these different uh, indicators in different points of the curves to analyze this, uh, to quantify these metrics, we have proposed this uh, analytics framework uh, composed in four steps. So we start, we start with, a, with an auto scenario generation. Uh, in this case, uh, we are considering that the system that we started is subject to, to an external event that has a, a variable intensity, for example, a hurricane. And then we use uh, fragile curves from the elements uh, to identify potential points that, that may fill, and we generate different scenarios based on that. Uh, so basically, each scenario is going to define uh, which lines are affected at what time and their, their damage and the, what is the restoration time. With this scenario information, then we go to a, to a power system uh, assessment, auto assessment. Uh, so we have a, a model and then we evaluate these scenarios in this model and we're, uh, we're calculating here uh, how much power was supplied and, and of course how much power was curtailed. And also we are identifying at this point uh, what, what elements in the water distribution system, for example, have also limitations in the power supply. We're trying to identify which pumps in the water system, for example, are disconnected or don't have power supply from the, from the grid. Then we proceed with the, with the water shortage analysis. So based on the results of the previous step, we are determining in this case uh, how much water was uh, curtailed. And based on these results, we obtain the indicators I mentioned before, the power and water saving capability and we proceed with the, with the metrics calculation. So to evaluate these metrics, we, we have uh, used this interconnection between the IEEE 33 bus uh, system and a 16 node water distribution system with the connections as, as shown. And we are evaluating here different scenarios in terms of, for example, severity of the, of the, of the events, 
the presence of distributed generation, the location of distributed generation, and also different uh, storage levels in the water distribution side. Um, and basically, we're trying to see under these different scenarios that represent the enhancements in the resilience, uh, how the metrics uh, respond to that and how they reflect this behavior. So, uh, one of the of the results that we observe here is um, when we have different storage levels. So, for example, we're considering cases where we have no storage in the water system, then we have some level that we increase it until a until a maximum point. Uh, so, in the lower in the low the bottom left figure, uh, we we see that for a a power disruption, we see that the water that is supplied, the saving capability improves as we increase the, the water storage. Uh, and we also see that these benefits on the water operation are reflected by the metrics. Since we have uh, less decay rates, we have a better response in the recovery, the interdependence between the system is also uh, diminished as well. Uh, even though we have more storage, we may have more storage, we, we also need to consider that if events are more severe, uh, in, in that case, this is also going to have an impact on the on the operation of the of the grid of, of the water distribution system, uh, and it's also going to be reflected in more in in in, more, in less uh, let's say water that is supplied supplied, and then it's reflected by the metrics as well. In this one, we want to uh, discuss uh, the effect of location. For example, uh, cases four to six are trying to analyze what happens when we when the distributed generation in the power system is close to the connection points of the pumps to the grid. So case four is a base case and case five considers that they're far, let's say for, for any reason they're far from, from the connection points and case uh, six that they are closer. And we, what we see here is that when we don't have, when, when the distributed generation is closer to the, to the connection points, in this case, if there is an outage, it's easier for the power system to provide backup uh, energy for, for the operation and sustain that. And this is also captured by the metrics. Uh, the other aspect of, of this is that some water nodes could be more sensitive uh, than others to the to the power outages. And for example, in this particular case that we were studying, uh, node three, uh, it's a node that is connected directly to a reservoir through a pump. So basically, if this pump is not operating, there's no water supply, so it's more sensitive. So the importance of this is that this helps us identify potential uh, vulnerabilities in both systems, power and water systems, that can eventually be enhanced, in, uh, for example, in a planning, in a planning operation. Uh, then, uh, just uh, we I mentioned in the in the previous one the effect of this regeneration. I just wanted to add that we uh, like some pump stations are. Uh, they can have a uh, power backup, which might be available or not at the moment of the disaster. It is also depending on if they're affected or not. Uh, but what we see here is that when there is backup uh, at the at the pump at the pump stations, we see that the water system is less affected when we have a power outage on the on the power side, which uh, makes sense. Uh, and basically, this creates some kind of uh, like barrier that does not allow this uh, cascading effect to move from the power side to the water side. So. Basically, to conclude my presentation, uh, we have analyzed different scenarios in this test to, that, to enhance the resilience from the power side and from the water side. And what we see here is that the metrics that we're proposing on this, they are capturing this effect. So um, we see that it's, it's important from this analysis to understand that uh, these systems, they are interdependent and their dependence is basically inviting us to plan and operate the systems together. So uh, they can definitely support one one uh, from the other side and basically these metrics are giving us steps uh, so we can so we can start designing and planning and operation methods that are based on, on for example this criterion and improve the integrated operation of both systems um, you can find more details on this on this work uh, there is a citation for the for the paper there that is it was just published and if there's any question I'm, I'm happy to answer thank you so much Thank you so much, so much, Luis. I think we have we have time for probably two or three questions from the from the audience. Is there is there any any question? Thank um, you for the presentation. Question: uh, It works like lengthy interdependence and uh, combining different energy centers. 
what is your big picture to include other infrastructure in addition to wonder and how all that other stuff? How do you see like integrating these networks and would better help improve resilience in power? Uh, thank you for your question. That's a very interesting question. So uh, we're, we're basically, uh, what, what we're considering here is that when there is a, there is a power grid and there are all these power outages going, what we're emphasizing here on the water system, but this is not limited to that. So this is, this is one of the, of the many things that can be, that we consider here. Communication systems, uh, natural gas infrastructures, transportation infrastructures, all they are affected by that. And even even if we plan, for example, solutions, there are solutions for, for example, to provide power backup uh, that are based on mobile resources, and that makes sense. We can we can we can take some some generation to, to specific points. But if the transportation uh, grid, for example, is affected because there was a disaster, that's also going to influence on that. So, in general terms, the ideal point on that is that we can actually model all these interdependencies with all the systems. What is the challenge, the complexity of this? Because each of the system first have, have a specific uh, aspects in their modeling that can be linear, that can be nonlinear. And yeah, and, and they have a, a, a lot of limitations to bring that. So we do need to balance like how complex we, we want this and, and how comprehensive uh, we want this. Uh, and also, well, how how accurate for that? And there are approaches for that. There, there's graph theory that is that's being applied, and that is starting to consider like how this how connections or damage in one and it's basically represented from a graph is also represented or reflected into other infrastructures. So I would say that the, the vision in the long run is that we need to start bringing them together, but we need to have this conversation because. As I mentioned, this this topic is, is something that we are exploring and we see that there's potential. So definitely there's something that we need to start taking steps to. Okay, thank you so much. And, and any other question? We have time for one last question. Oh, there is one. Hi, Luis. Thank you for the great presentation. Uh, can we just expand on where uh, between yeah, that's that's a very good question. Yeah, so in this case, in in this study that we are that we made on this, uh, we are considering that basically is the the pumps that are connected on the like connecting to the grid uh, are basically the ones affected. So it's an effect from the power side to the water side. So the steps that we're taking after after this work is. Okay, but what can we do the other way around, you know, because in some way, uh, the, the, we know that the interdependence between power water systems has been analyzed and considered uh, from a transmission level because we have hydropower, you know, and hydropower is the way that, that we get benefits from what the water set to the, to the power set. So one interesting um, step into this is including these forms of of storage and different scales that we can not i mean we're analyzing this at the at the distribution level so we're not considering this as in the scale of as it happens in the transmission level but still we can have we can implement this in a smaller scales and we and still, this is this is a discussion that's been going on and of course this the integration of this and also coordinating uh the operation between the two systems uh provides another mechanism where the power system supplies or, or supports the operation of the water system, but at the same time, we are storing resources on the water system that eventually can be discharged and be supplied back into the power grid. So uh, here we, we need to expand this vision to also consider that the water system at the distribution level can also uh, support the operation of the power grid. And not only, for example, through, through storage, for example, it can be done uh, there is this technology in conduit hydropower, so basically it's using the, the the water flow to generate power now. For example, just from the from the from the flow of water, and this is also being being studied and integrated into the grids, and also to get benefits from the water side to the power system. Okay. 